So if you remember when I put this LAT 6.6 liter in this Camaro, I chose to move the engine up and forward a little bit. So that way I can have pretty clear access to all the spark plugs and whatnot. And just be easier uh, track day to work on something instead of having to pull the engine out and do something. So the big question that's been in the back of my mind is will this transmission, or any transmission for that matter, clear the body tunnel? Because going up and forward, you know, you're moving the whole body of the transmission up closer to the, to the tunnel. I know with the 6L90 that I had, I tested it before and it definitely did not clear the tunnel. So I'm hoping that because this is a lot smaller, it should clear. And if you're liking the build so far, make sure you drop a comment, a like, hit the like button, it definitely helps out the channel. But if you have a friend that's in the car, share them the video, they'll probably get a kick out of it. All right, so here's the power glide. And I know for a fact, no top bolt. So hopefully I can do one, two, three, four, five, and six. I have six bolts. That's the, the game plan anyway. I'll know more when I actually look behind the, uh, behind the LAT, we'll be able to look at the bolt pattern. And I could have looked it up on the internet or whatever, but my main thing was put it up there and try. So I'm gonna go get the hardware and slide this under there, probably on a cardboard box. I think this is too tall to clear the jack stands. And uh, we'll jack it up and mount it to the engine. Oh no, that's definitely not gonna clear that way. I may have to go, hmm, I may have to go from the front and take the tire off. Could use a magnet tray. cardboard like a break dancer in the 80s maybe 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 Let's see here. no just I mean like super close you know if I had a uh, aftermarket bell housing I could just unbolt it slide it underneath there bolt both up unless I go from the front Close. I mean, like, super close. It's just getting caught up on the steering rack. So, I'm gonna have to go up some more. Oh well, tis what it is. That should be enough. Just to slide it underneath the rack and everything. I have jack stands, so everything's nice and safe. There we go. I'm gonna slide past the oil pan. We'll be good. Oh, no, I'm running out of cardboard. There we go. If it don't fit, Push it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Right on top of an O2 center, that's great. <laughs> Not really. Okay. So a while back when I put this harness in the car, I left all of like the rear stuff and like grounds and O2 sensors hanging off the back. So, cause like that's kind of where that stuff goes anyway. Anyway, uh, I need to get it out of the way of the transmission because if I don't, I won't be able to put the bell housing up. So, probably shouldn't have tugged on that, but that's okay. I'm just gonna drape this over here and get this stuff out of the way of my mounting surface on the back of the block. There we go. Am I completely clear? On this side I am, but not on the other side. 
Yeah, this is for the starter and the knock sensor. Get that up and out of the way. Boom, there we go, it's all tucked up. So now, completely clear. I should be able to jack the transmission up, bolt to the back of the block. Right here I've got one, two, three, and four. Four bolts to bolt the bell housing up. And I got the fifth one, which is right there. That one will line up, so that's five. But I don't have a hole on the block for number six. And we definitely don't have a 12 o'clock neither on the bell housing nor up on the block. Problem is they moved the 12 o'clock from the LS to the LT, Gen 4 to Gen 5, they moved 12 o'clock bolt hole location to like 1230-ish, you know, depending if you leave on time or not. They moved it to clear the mechanical lift pump for the fuel that rolls, it has its own like, uh, how do I say this? On the camshaft, there's an extra lobe that is solely dedicated to push and drive this mechanical fuel pump for the high pressure for direct injection. So that thing runs like, I don't know, like 3,000 pounds, something like that. But anyway, if you were to put the bolt in the block right there at 12, it would never clear. So they moved it at 1230. Well, well, maybe like a little bit after lunch. So won't have that one. Won't have this one. But I'll have the bottom two and the bottom two which is there and there, and then the fifth one. So five out of however many ain't bad. I've done more with less. Another thing you notice, how many bolts are there for the for the flywheel? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. LS is uh, six. All right, so I gotta get this, I gotta get this transmission up in the air, which means I gotta get the jack up underneath it. The cool thing about a power glide, it sits up on its own. No crazy bell housing. Let's see if I can get it up underneath here. Oh yeah. Tell I've done this a couple times. 240 life. That way I can use two hands here. Oops, oops, Let's see if I can do, how many, so put a comment down below, how many times do you think I'm gonna hit the car with the jack handle? That's going up pretty good, that's not bad, you know? I think it's gone clear. Oh, dude, it's gonna clear, I think. Oh, in case you're wondering, part number for this frame brace is 10278587. <laughs> like, why would GM put a part number for this brace? I cannot go up anymore with the transmission because I'm hitting body here. So whatever this ear was for, shift linkage, whatever, I may have to cut that ear or clearance the tunnel some because I cannot, I cannot clear, I cannot increase the angle of the transmission this way to get it to mount flush. Let me show you up top. Here's a better look of what I'm talking about. See the light? No good, no bueno. I cannot continue. Now I need to get a flashlight, look in there, see if the having an issue with this, but I know I'm on the dial pins. Not by much, that's concerning, but I'm getting real close on there. I can't tilt the transmission up to get it to go flush because I'm hitting that part of the body. So I need to look up and see what's that tab for on a power glide. Is it for the shift linkage? Like, I don't know. Cause yeah, I don't know. I have to find out. I can see the one there. On that side, I'm miles off. All right, so after some Googling, I found out that that bracket that's on the side of the transmission that's keeping me from getting flush up against the back of the block is not needed. It's some stock cable shift mount point, whatever. b and makes a real trick when it goes up on the pan. So I'm gonna cut that off, delete it while it's underneath the car. So that way I can go up, mount it and transmission mount it. Okay, that was fun. So I went ahead and cut that bracket off. I mean, that's not the prettiest of cuts, but it will do. 
I should be able to clear that tunnel there and mount this B&M Power Glide to the back of the L8T 6.6 liter. And so I got two started on the other side and you can see there, the gap's way, way tighter, which is good because that means that most likely what it was was just a little bit of rust on the dowel pins, keeping me from lining up. I've got those two bolts, like I said, started over here and I'm just gonna pull her on home. All right, I got both of those on there now. Now it's time to run them home. Yeah, that pulls it nice and snug. Let's do the other one. Oh yeah, nice and snugged it up nicely. So two bolts. I should be able to get the other ones from underneath. Let's see if I can get up under here. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I guess from laying on my back underneath the car, all that blood flows out of your, flows into your brain, makes you not think. This fifth bolt does in fact screw in. So you got one, two, three, four on the other side, and you have the fifth one here. So this does screw in. Run that 15 in real quick. There we go, it's in there. I mean, it's just enough, you know what I mean? Just to hold it up. So there you go, that's five bolts. I believe that is the first time I've ever seen a power glide bolted to a Gen V LT, let alone an L8T 6.6 liter in an F body. Yep. Yeah, that's the first LAT66 with the power glide behind it in an F body. Ta da! So I am worried about the driveline angle. I do have a piece of wood in there from transporting it, just because I didn't have a transmission and a cross member in the back. So I didn't want it to like bust the pan when I was moving it around. But I do have this. So we're going to set it in there and see what the angle is like. Get some light in there. That's pretty spot on. Yeah, that's pretty spot on. If anything, yeah, if anything, it is tilted down some in the back. Let's see if I use it like this. No. Yeah, it's definitely tilted up in the back a little bit. So it needs to come down. So that wood needs to come out. And then I can build a cross member across the back. From sitting, because I, I mean, I put the engine in and I let it sit for like five or six months. Uh, I think the wood has absorbed some water and is swollen up because as I jack it up, it's not, it's not moving. I'm just putting stress on bolts that doesn't need to be stressed out. Yeah, it's not moving. It's lifting the car. <laughs> so, I'm gonna have to cut this wood out somehow, some way, without messing up my uh, my stuff. Because the only other way to do it would be to unbolt all, the whole subframe and let it drop down to get this piece of wood out. So, I don't know, I need to figure out some kind of way to get this wood out of here. Got the jack out of the way. That means that the tail shaft of the transmission is being supported by that jack stand. And the wood's out and it's gone. So you can see here, I got plenty of space there, but right here, see it from the back. And I counted for this to be a manual rack, not a modified power steering rack. We got a lot of work done today. Mounted the power glide up to the LAT 6.6 .6 liter. Nobody's ever done that before. That's the first. I've scoured the internet because I was looking for information to see if anybody had any experiences with it so I could learn from it because that's how you learn. You know, other people do stuff, you learn. And I didn't see anything. So there you go, that's done. And I had a great time turning some wrenches today. 
If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a comment, a like, share it to a friend. I'm sure they'll enjoy it if you did, and we'll see you next time.